you join us at the most crucial part and arguably the most annoying part of any camping trip and that is of course the packing up of the car is that more annoying than trying to get the tent back in the bag don't know but i suppose we're going to find out over the next couple of days anyway yes tomorrow morning myself and my two beautiful children will be heading from here at my flat in north hampshire down to a campsite near tiverton in devon for a few days of fishing swimming playing and generally getting away from it all and the car that we've entrusted to get us down there well, it's this. Let's close the boot so you can get a better look at it. It's the new Kia EV6. Now, I know what you must be thinking. Is this man an idiot? Has he taken leave of his senses? After all, Hampshire to Devon, that is a properly long journey, isn't it? Yeah, and yes, it is 152 miles, according to Google Maps, when I looked it up just now. And that's if that doesn't get extended by traffic diversions, which with the perilous state of the A303 in holiday season is a distinct possibility. And as an electric car, the EV6 only suitable for short distance journeys, right? Well, according to the theory, not so. This bad boy is a fully juiced up GT line rear wheel drive model. And according to the official WLTP figures, that should get us 328 miles of range, which should leave us with 178 miles to spare. Now, obviously, the real world range will be quite a lot less than that, especially if we're spending most of the journey at high motorway speeds. And again, that's provided the A303 doesn't have other ideas and have us crawling most of the way, heaven forbid. But with that sort of differential, you've got to think that we're going to have enough range in the bag to get us to where we're going without an ounce of range anxiety. We're going to see how we get on on that score and once we're down there I'm going to be showing you why this car is the perfect camping companion in a variety of other ways. But before we do all that it is time for the first test. Is there enough space and practicality to get all of that stuff into that car with enough room left over for me and the kids? Well, while I find out, I'm going to leave you in the capable hands of some voiceover. Now, we should mention nice and early that this video won't have the production values you'll be used to from the Car Gurus UK channel. That's because while we usually have a film crew with proper equipment, I'm genuinely going on my holiday. So I'm basically capturing footage for this by lashing a GoPro to a camping chair and talking to it. So do please consider this to be more of a vlog piece rather than a full on video review. And with that caveat out of the way, a word on the EV6's practicality. In normal everyday circumstances, the 490 litre boot will easily be big enough for most families' needs, but obviously these are not normal circumstances. With the amount of stuff we're carrying, we're gonna to have to utilize every ounce of space available. The unoccupied seats, the footwells, the space above the parcel shelf, the 52 litre storage area under the bonnet, everything and even then it'll be a squeeze however miraculously with a bit of creative packing we somehow managed to squeeze everything in right now that's done i am off to bed ahead of a super early start in the morning night night morning it's about half seven uh, been on the road about an hour little bit later leaving than anticipated as is usually the way kids are still uh, awake are you gonna say hello guys hello um they weren't massive fans of being up early this morning and i've got to say neither was i um but my sister actually lives not too far from where we're going and i've done this journey enough times to know that if you're not past stonehenge by half eight at the latest then you can face some pretty severe holdups. Before we set off, I made a note of what it said on the car's range readout, and it said we had 100% charge and a range of 256 miles. So some way short of the theoretical 328, but still plenty to get us where we're going without needing to charge. But we'll see how quickly that falls with the type of driving we're doing. In the meantime, let's think about what doing this journey in the EV6 is actually like? And the answer is really very pleasant indeed. 
The first thing that strikes you about this car is the quiet, when these two allow, obviously. Um, even for an electric car, this is a really hushed thing. Obviously, there's no engine noise, but wind noise and road noise are also really well suppressed. So this is turning out to be a very peaceful journey indeed. And it'd be great if we could keep it that way, guys. Thanks very much. In terms of the ride comfort, it's pretty good. There is a little bit of busyness from suspension and that applies both at low urban speeds and higher motorway speeds, but it's nothing that will get you irritated or uncomfortable. And the payoff for that slightly edgy ride is a very decent control in the corners, which is complemented by lots of grip and sharp, responsive, weighty steering. Now, as we said earlier, this is the rear wheel drive version, which is the least powerful EV6 on offer with 226 brake horsepower and a 0-62 time of 7.3 seconds. Now, as those numbers suggest, the sensation of acceleration you feel is adequate rather than awe-inspiring, but it's completely fine. It's muscular enough to cope with everyday life. And if you want a bit more pace, then the all-wheel drive version has another 100 horsepower and a 0-62 sprint time of 5.2 seconds, while the forthcoming range-topping GT version has a frankly staggering 577 brake horsepower and does the 0-62 dash in three and a half seconds, and that is just bonkers. And driving experience aside, this car is a very pleasant place in which to spend time. For instance, the quality on show is fabulous. Okay, so some of the switches feel a little bit Korean in the slightly flimsy way that they operate, but the materials in here and the standard of the fit and finish is really, really impressive. Honestly, the gap between the latest Kia models and the premium European brands is really very negligible these days. All the car screens, which are standard across the range, also look very impressive. The infotainment system could be more responsive with a pronounced pause between jabbing the screen and anything happening, but at least the graphics are sharp and the logical menus make it pretty easy to find your way around. There's a very generous amount of a luxury and safety kit provided as standard as well. Right, so we are nearly there, about five miles left to go until we get to the campsite. I've barely even looked um, at the range doofer on the way down. I've really not been worried about it. Um, and quite justifiably as well, because looking at it now, it's saying that we've got 44% of our battery left, which equates to 111 miles. So absolutely loads of range in the bag. Not sure what anyone was worried about really. On arrival at the campsite, we're shown to our pitch, which on the one hand is nice and big, which is good, and on the other hand is right next to the swimming pool building, which is, well, noisy. But regardless, we set about the not inconsiderable task of pitching camp. Can I suggest that if you don't want to hear all the swear words, I'd come back a bit later if I were you. So, welcome to camp. Time for the official introduction. Sorry it's taken me until the day after we got here to do this, but to be honest, after I spent two and a half hours putting up this monster 12-man tent in 30 degree heat, funnily enough, I wasn't really in the mood to chat. So, these are my two, Felix and Bess, eight and six. Uh, quite lovely, I think you'll agree. When we got down here, we met up with my significant other, Catherine, and her two, Sophie, who's 10, and Sam, who's seven. I'm not gonna tell you what Catherine's age is because she will punch me. Um, so here we are, we're all set up. Uh, there's stuff everywhere, it's absolute chaos, but it matters not a jot because we are on holiday. 
And with that in mind, let's go and do some holiday stuff. I'm not qualified for this. Even when you're camping, especially when you're camping, you need your morning coffee. And I don't know if you've ever used one of these rubbish gas stoves, but it takes about five hours to boil a kettle. And as soon as the kettle comes up to the boil, it runs out of gas because you're using these widgy little canisters. But we don't actually need to bother with that with the key around. Let's just turn it off because I have one of these and I have one of these. Pretty obvious what that is, so I'll just set that down there. But this is what's known as a vehicle to load connector or V2L, and it comes as standard with all but the entry level EV6. So, what we do is open the charge port, take this cap off, and put it in. We've got 60 seconds to get that in there, and then we slide this down, and as you can see, three pin domestic plug and we can actually run appliances off the car which if you're off-grid camping can be very handy indeed and with a surprisingly decent amount of charge still left in the Kia's battery we can use the V2L function for more than just coffee now I do have a small confession to make about the vehicle to load charging we don't actually need it for this trip. I just wanted to show you the off-grid capabilities of the EV6. And the reason we don't need it is because if you look here at this electricity supply and follow this long orange wire all the way, you'll see that it leads into our tent and into an electric hookup that gives us three sockets. And of those three sockets, you'll see that the one on the far right leads back out of the tent and into the EV6. Yep, that's right. The car has all this time been charging, charging extremely slowly at a rate of about 1.2 kilowatts. But it's not moved for three days because we've been enjoying the facilities here on the campsite. So it's been charging slowly, but charging for three days. But with this albeit very slow hookup, this car now has a battery replenished to 96%, which should be good for around 259 miles of real world range. And with a return journey of 152 miles, I think you'll find that that will be plenty to get us home. One more thing, with this campsite and a lot of campsites like it, you pay extra to have the electric hookup. You don't pay for the amount of electricity you use. So this charge, because we would have had the electric hookup anyway, so this charge essentially has been absolutely free. And talking of return journeys, it's only a couple of hours till we have to begin ours. And before that can happen, we've got to get all of this lot down and packed away. And that's going to be one heck of a task. So thank you very much for joining us on our family camping trip with the Kia EV6. But now I've got to get cracking. If you like this video, then do subscribe to the Car Gurus UK YouTube channel for lots more review videos that are, frankly, way higher in quality. And if you're thinking of buying your next car, then why not find it on cargurus.co.uk? And with our super clever pricing technology, we'll even tell you whether the dealer selling it is giving you a good price or not.